to you both. Breathe. I'm here. It'll be great. Okay. You got this. Let's go. To the chat. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. We have come rejoicing into the house of the Lord for the celebration, dear brothers and sisters. And now we stand with William and Jane. On the day they intend to form a home of their own. For them, this is a moment of unique importance. So let us support them with our affection, with our friendship, and with our prayer as their brothers and sisters. Let us listen attentively with them to the word that God speaks to us today. Then with Holy Church, let us humbly pray to God the Father through Christ our Lord for this couple, his servants, that he lovingly accept them, bless them, and make them always one. Let us pray. Be attentive to our prayers, O Lord, and in your kindness pour out your grace on these your servants, William and Jane, that coming together before your altar, they may be confirmed in love for one another through Christ our Lord. Amen. May now all be seated for the reading of the word. house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their fathers, the day I took them by the hand to lead them forth from the land of Egypt. But this is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will place my law within them and write it upon their hearts. I will be their God and they shall be my people. No longer will they have need to teach their friends and relatives how to know the Lord. All, from least to greatest, shall know me, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. of all look to you, 
let you give them their food in due season. and all its ways, and holy in all his deeds. The Lord is close to all who call on him, who call on him. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, let mutual love continue. Do not neglect hospitality, for through it some have unknowingly entertained angels. Be mindful of prisoners, as of sharing their imprisonment, and of the ill-treated, as of yourselves. For you also are in the body. Let marriage be honored among all, and let the marriage bed be kept undefiled. <clears throat> let your life be free from love of money, but be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never forsake you or abandon you. Thus, we may say with confidence, the Lord is my helper and I will not be afraid. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks. <coughs> be with you. And a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Some Pharisees approached Jesus and tested him, saying, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any cause whatever? He said in reply, Have you not read that from the beginning the Creator made them male and female and said, For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, man must not separate. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. What God has joined together, no man can separate. It's a very intense claim. It's very intense. This idea of this union that God has put together, no one, no power, no person, no nothing could separate it. This divine unity 
is so strong and it's being extended to you. A union, a covenant, a marriage, a love that you two are being invited into today and every day for the rest of your life. This intense, inseparable love is the same love that Christ shares with his church. And that love is being invited, you're being invited into it. Nowadays, when we hear the word love, a lot of times we think of a lot of emotions. We tend to equate it with feelings. And that's not bad. <clears throat> I'm not saying that's a bad thing. If you had said to each other, I love you, and didn't really feel anything, I'd be a little concerned. But our Lord is kind of inviting us to consider a love that goes beyond that. A love that goes deeper. Because we all know that feelings are not lasting. Eventually, they go away. And if we ground love onto these fleeting emotions, when they're gone, what does it mean to love then? When the feelings are kind of subsided, how do you love the person in front of you? What does it mean then to love like Christ loves his church? Look up there. That, Jane, William, that is love. And that is the love that Christ is calling you to, to enter into. Because that love came into this world not to share good vibes, not to make us all feel better, but that love manifested in humanity because of the intense, passionate desire for each and every one of us in this room. That love became man and saved everyone. The love, his sacrifice brought redemption. And that's the love that serves as the foundation of the marriage you're about to enter into. We gather before this altar, right in front of this crucifix to remind all of us and to remind you, Jane and William, that your love for each other is and must always be grounded in God's love for you. Not merely just the emotional, ordinary love, but in addition, all of the love of sacrifice, of forgiveness, the love of the cross. Because in remaining in this love, in remaining in Christ's love, God will work through you, he will remain with you, and his love will be perfected in you throughout your entire relationship. After today, you too will be transformed into witnesses into examples, into living proof of the miracle that God's sacrifice and resurrection exists in this world that so needs it. By your marriage today, you will become the living manifestation of Christ's love for all of us. From here on out, you will be called to share that love to be witnesses, yes, included with all of the emotions, but even more so by your actions, by your decisions to put each other over yourself. There are many moments that you'll find that very easy. But, and as, as I'm sure those of us around here who are married, well, those of you, not me, those of you who are married can attest that that's not always gonna be the easiest thing you will find yourself in difficult moments that'll be hard to get through. But that's okay. It's part of humanity. We all have our own limitations, our own weaknesses that require patience and sacrifice. But the beauty of the love that you both will now share in God, the love that he extends to you, is that those difficult moments are now going to be those opportunities to renew the vows you're about to make, to renew the promises that you will share with each other and to grow with courage, with humility, with self 
sacrifice and with forgiveness. And when you do, you will allow yourself to grow closer to each other, to strengthen the love that you share for each other, because you will love like Christ. And by loving each other as Christ loves you, you will bring each other to heaven. That's the whole point. Married life isn't just another way to engage our earthly life. It's not another more fun way to live life no longer by ourselves. It's meant to be the very union, the very covenant, the very relationship with the very person that will help you get to heaven. Everything is for that purpose. Christ's love had the power to destroy the effects of sin and death and open heaven for all of us. And it opened heaven for you. And now, the Lord unites you two together, grounded upon his love for the world, to carry each other and bring each other into the eternal joys of heaven. He loves you both so much that he willed that you two would spend the rest of your lives together. So now, as you prepare to take these steps together, no longer as two, but as one flesh on your own journey to heaven, my prayer for you is that you always remain close to each other you always remain close to God's love for you. And may he always strengthen in the good times and in the bad, the union, the promises, the vows you make to each other. Because what God puts together, no one can separate. Jane and William to come forward with your with your party. Dearly beloved, ye have come together into the house of the church, so that in the presence of the church's minister and the community, your intention to enter marriage may be strengthened by the Lord with a sacred seal. Christ abundantly blesses the love that binds you. Through a special sacrament, he enriches and strengthens those he has already consecrated by holy baptism that they may be faithful to each other forever and assume all the responsibilities of married life. And so, in the presence of the church, I ask you to state your intentions. William and Jane, have you come here to enter into marriage without coercion, freely and wholeheartedly? I have. Are you prepared, as you follow the path of marriage, to love and honor each other for as long as you both shall live? I am. Are you prepared to accept children lovingly from God and to bring them up according to the law of Christ and His Church? I am. Since it is your intention to enter the covenant of holy matrimony, join your right hands and declare your consent before God and His Church. I, William, take you, Jane, 
take you, Jane, to be, my wife. to be my wife. I promise to be faithful to you. I promise to be faithful to you. In good times and in bad. In good times and in bad. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love you and to honor you. To love you and to honor you. All the days of my life. All the days of my life. I, Jane. Hi, Jane. Take you, William. Take you, William. To be my to be my husband. I promise to be faithful to you. I promise to be faithful to you. In good times and in bad. In good times and in bad. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love you and to honor you. To love you and to honor you. All the days of my life. All the days of my life. May the Lord in his kindness strengthen the consent you have declared before the church and graciously bring to fulfillment his blessing within you. What God joins together, let no one put asunder. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks Thank be to God. God. May the Lord bless these rings, which you will give to each other as a sign of love and fidelity. Jane, receive this ring as a sign of my love and fidelity. As a sign of my love and fidelity. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the, Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> William, receive this ring. William, receive this ring as a sign of my love and fidelity. As a sign of my love and fidelity. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the, Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And of the Holy Spirit. Please stand. Dear brothers and sisters, as we call to mind the special gift of grace and charity by which God has been pleased to crown and consecrate the love of our sister Jane and our brother William, let us commend them to the Lord. That these faithful Christians, Jane and William, newly joined in holy matrimony, may always enjoy health and well-being. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. That he will bless their covenant as he chose to sanctify marriage at Cana and Galilee. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. That they be granted perfect and fruitful love, peace and strength, and that they bear faithful witness the name of Christian. <laughs> Let's pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. <laughs> that the Christian people may grow in virtue day by day, and that all who are burdened by any need may receive the help of grace from above. Let's pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That the grace of the sacrament will be renewed by the Holy Spirit in all married persons here present. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Graciously pour out upon this husband and wife, O Lord, the spirit of your love, to make them one heart and one soul, so that nothing whatever may divide those you have joined, and no harm come to those you have filled with your blessing. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now let us all pray together as Christ the Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Now. Let us humbly invoke God's blessing upon this bride and groom, that in his kindness he may favor with his help those on whom he has bestowed the sacrament of matrimony. Please kneel. 
O God, who by your mighty power created all things out of nothing, and when you had set in place the beginnings of the universe, formed man and woman in your own image, making the woman an inseparable helpmate to the man, that they might no longer be two but one flesh, and taught that what you were pleased to make one must never be divided. O God, who consecrated the bond of marriage by so great a mystery, that in the wedding covenant you foreshadowed the sacrament of Christ and his church. O God, by whom woman is joined to man and the companionship they had in the beginning, is endowed with the one blessing, not forfeited by original sin, nor washed away by the flood. Look now with favor on these your servants joined together in marriage, who ask to be strengthened by your blessing. Send down on them the grace of the Holy Spirit and pour your love into their hearts, that they may remain faithful in the marriage covenant. May the grace of love and peace abide in your daughter Jane, and let her always follow the example of those holy women whose praises are sung in the scriptures. May her husband entrust his heart to her, so that acknowledging her as his equal and his joint heir to the life of grace, he may show her due honor and cherish her always with the love that Christ has for his church. And now, Lord, we implore you, may these your servants hold fast to the faith and keep your commandments. Made one in the flesh, may they be blameless in all they do. And with the strength that comes from the gospel, may they bear true witness to Christ before all. May they be blessed with children and prove themselves virtuous parents who live to see their children's children. And grant, that reaching at last together the fullness of years for which they hope, they may come to the life of the blessed in the kingdom of heaven, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand. And may Almighty God bless all of you here, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please join me in congratulating Mr. and Mrs. Garibrandt.